Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your September the 10th, Tuesday, 2024. And you know what that date means? It Well, it means we finally have made it to the peak of the hurricane season. That is our lead headline here for today. And yeah, we do have a storm to obviously talk about with Francine out in the Gulf of Mexico, but it is one of potential two hurricanes that we're going to be tracking. We're probably likely to see Gordon form later this week out in the middle of the Atlantic as well. And we're also going to give you an update here on this update here on uh, the pattern shift across the country where things are going to be warming up for a lot of the country and cooling down out in the West. We'll get you the latest look at that as well. Now, before we get rolling into this, first, I want to thank the new subscribers here to the channel. It's always great to see the number moving in the right direction. And if you'd like to be part of this family, it'd be an honor and privilege to be one of your sources. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. It does help with the YouTube algorithm as we continue to try to grow this channel. And this product is for you guys. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery again from coast to coast, looking very quiet indeed. A little weak, little disturbance here in the middle of the country, setting off some showers here from Nebraska up toward the Dakotas. Obviously, your eyes get drawn to this big blob down here. This is Francine. This is kind of blow-offs here uh, from the storm and kind of interacting with an old boundary in here. So this is really not what we're watching. It's this down here. We're starting to get indications of a reorganization of global thunderstorms around that center of circulation. So we'll do a more detailed look at this here in a second. Your current uh, surface maps here going temperatures very nice here for most of the country. A lot of 50s out here for the eastern half of the United States. A little milder up here in the plains with the clouds and a little rain showers around. And actually cooling down out on the west coast finally after a very hot and steamy weekend out there. So uh, let's talk about what's going on down here. Obviously, we've got a lot of watches and warnings here along the coast. We're going to the specifics on that in our tropical section here in just a second. We'll deep dive that. And uh, we got some red flag warnings out here in the West and into Southern California where they got some fires going on here, not too far from the Los Angeles area. Hopefully they're getting some of those fires under control out there. And they've got a big trough coming here long term. So fire conditions in the West should get a little bit better as we go through the next seven to 10 days. All right, let's talk about our, our tropical storm. This is our tropical storm, Francine. Again, just here getting organized, seeing the thunderstorm starting to flare up and might be trying to form an eye wall maybe. We'll see closely here. It's uh, become a very concentric storm. Now, that's concerning because when it's a smaller circulation center, it does allow the opportunity for some rapid intensification. So uh, they are anticipating the storm to become a hurricane a little bit later this afternoon. And the, the, the pressure has dropped just a little bit here uh, for this morning, but it's going to continue to move up toward the north and east and heading up toward the Louisiana coast, which, of course, folks in New Orleans get a little nervous when we talk about storms. Obviously, Katrina from 2005 comes to mind, but we're not talking about a Katrina here. But it's going to be a rainy, stormy day here in New Orleans regardless. That's our weather city of the day, and they're looking at thunderstorms likely this afternoon, a high temperature of 79 degrees. And if you would like to nominate your city as the weather city of the day, and you've got a good webcam in your area, perhaps on YouTube or some other source, just go ahead and post that link down below and we'll go ahead and consider that for a future broadcast. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the influence from Francine here as well, as we're going to be looking at your day one outlook here. And uh, obviously, we've got a marginal risk for severe weather here for today, right along the Gulf Coast here, right across Louisiana. Not really a direct influence from Francine, but we do have that active weather here for today. And then you got a general thunderstorm threat here for the high plains and back, back out here through the Rockies, but nothing organized, not expecting anything too significant in that part of the country here for today. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the day two outlook. Let's go check out the day two. Obviously, that's going to change a little bit. You notice that slight risk for severe weather down there along the Gulf Coast. Okay, that's coming in, and uh, that is going to be the landfall of this hurricane expected sometime late tomorrow. And of course, with those outer bands, you got to worry about the possibility of tornadoes in that area. In fact, uh, that's what the tornado risk is going to be running here for tomorrow. Uh, roughly about a 5% chance we may see isolated weak tornadoes as the storm makes landfall from tomorrow from Louisiana all the way over to the Florida Panhandle. So folks, you guys get in that part of the country need to be weather aware for tomorrow for that activity. And finally, going to day three, that's going to be moving a little bit off to the east a little bit. It looks like a lot of Alabama, east central Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and obviously uh, parts of Mississippi will be under the gun there. And again, could not rule out the possibility of a few tornadoes in that zone as well as we go into your day three outlook going into Thursday. And there's another little pocket up here 
I don't want to forget you folks up there in two areas of Montana and the Dakotas also looking at a marginal risk for some isolated severe weather there as well as we go into your Thursday on your day three outlook. So uh, that's what we're seeing currently. So the big thing here again is watching the heavy rainfall amounts. That's going to be a big concern here along the Gulf Coast. Uh, not too bad today, just marginal there across Louisiana, but it really steps up big time as we look at your day two. We're looking at the moderate risk for excessive rainfall there across Louisiana, Mississippi, slight risk getting into southern Arkansas and Mississippi and the Florida Panhandle with some of those outer bands. And that'll shift to the north as the system makes landfall moves into areas of Mississippi, Alabama, and heading up toward Arkansas and southern Illinois. So obviously excess of rainfall and flooding will be concerned. This thing's going to kind of stall out too. I'm not exactly sure the exact path this is going to go once it moves inland because the 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 the, the wind steering currents above are really going to collapse. It's kind of going to get trapped above, under an area of high pressure there a little bit. So uh, we'll track that closely. So again, I want to re-highlight this for... Again, your day two outlook for Wednesday. We're looking at slight risk for severe weather. Again, we're talking about New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Uh, obviously, the marginal includes uh, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Lafayette, uh, uh, Lafayette, and then, and then obviously we're talking up toward the north buildings up there to the north as well. But but this is our main area here of concern, and that's where in that yellow where the highest risk for potential tornadoes are going to be as Francine makes its landfall. Now, again, like I mentioned, September 10th, that is officially the peak of the hurricane season. We are now here. It's a downhill slide from here. But uh, because we were so not as active as we saw in the first half of the season, we may be a little more active on the back end as we head toward October especially. So we'll see how that works out over the coming weeks. Here's your latest outlook outside of Francine. There's the latest coordinates on Francine. The pressure's dropped a couple of millibars from the 5 o'clock advisory from 992 down to 990 there. And, of course, we've got those couple areas of disturbed weather well out in the Atlantic. And the one that's out there, the furthest, showing a 70% chance for development, that's the one likely to become Gordon. And at this point, I think that one stays out in the Atlantic. I'm not concerned about making a, an East Coast run on that system for right now. So here is, of course, is our track as it's going to be moving up into the Louisiana area as we go into uh, probably late in the afternoon. We're looking at maybe 5, 7 o'clock. I will be doing some live broadcasts on Francine. So again, if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way you can be alerted on when I do my live broadcasts here for this landfalling hurricane. Again, late in the day on, on your um, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon on Wednesday afternoon. So it looks like a landfall about 100 mile per hour winds is what the hurricane center is going with. A category two hurricane making landfall there along the coast. Now it's got plenty of warm water. Water temperatures out there are running between uh, 85 and 87 degrees. The northern Gulf, as it moves up that way, running closer to about 84, 85. But where it's currently sitting is running about 87. So it's got some extreme fuel. We'll call it octane fuel for this storm system to kind of feed off as it moves toward the north. And the big concern, obviously, with any landfalling hurricane is going to be the storm surge. And that is going to be a bit of a problem right there, as you can see there, as we're looking at areas there, uh, looking at... Uh, what, five to 10 feet uh, there along the coast, right through there. That's where the, we're going to see the highest. To the right of that center of circulation, that's where the highest storm surge is going to be. And obviously, a lot of marshes in there. There's not a, a lot of, lot of uh, population where it's making landfall. That's the only good part is. But then, again, you got New Orleans fairly, slow, uh, fairly close by. So we're going to kind of meander in that course. If it's a little bit further east, the impact on New Orleans could be significantly higher. So something to watch closely. Here again, here's a close-up imagery as we're getting the blow-up of thunderstorms that are blowing up very nicely uh, there along that center of circulation there. Uh, again, right in here, this is Francine. Don't, I kind of ignore all this. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going up here toward the north, uh, but that's really not part of the main system there. Uh, but uh, definitely is showing a kind of a complex uh, center they're developing. And if it gets a, what they call a central dense overcast, a CDO there, uh, it can strengthen pretty rapidly. And I think there's pretty good indications that we're going to see significant strengthening as we go through this afternoon as the storm begins, starts to make its turn and move up toward the north northeast. Again, this is the latest track on this. Same general area that all the spaghetti plots are kind of going there on that system. And then we'll turn our attention out here to the Atlantic side. We'll be watching out out here uh, for these systems out here, see which one of these two systems out here will potentially become Gordon. Right now, doesn't look all that impressive here on the infrared imagery out there in the Atlantic. 
But I think uh, pretty good indications are we're going to get at least Gordon out of one of these disturbances here in the coming days. As you just saw, we got up to 70% for the one there furthest off to the east there, just off the African coast. So you're going to watch that pretty closely. The eSense model is showing this as well as we're tracking uh, both these, uh, these models here as they're kind of coming in again. Of course, this there is Francine coming in potentially as a Cat 2 hurricane there, there. And then we're going to watch this other conglomerate out here, which is going to become Gordon. And uh, that one also has the indications it could potentially become a major hurricane out there. It's got plenty of fuel to uh, feed off out there. But again, that one I'm not anticipating to be uh, too big of a problem as it should remain out in the Atlantic for now. So we need to go ahead and take a look at the models. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest hurricane models. Got a couple of them here I want to show you here. We're looking at the wind profile, and we're going to track this through as we watch this system. We're going to move up toward the north. Watch that time stamp there in the upper right-hand corner as we're anticipating it to, to strengthen here pretty rapidly here as we go into Tuesday and going into Wednesday. This is the stronger of the two miles here. Uh, two models already showing there winds up to 102 there's 102 showing up right there uh, there's a 94 on the winds right there so we're getting some of the higher winds that uh, to blew up in there uh as the storm system of uh, hurricane at this point should be approaching the coast now look at that look at there by the time you get to 11 o'clock on wednesday you're looking at some very strong winds on the right side of that storm look at that, 113 to 100 miles per hour this is uh wind gusts right there so again just under Category three status here on this potential hurricane. On this hurricane, not potential, I think it's likely to be a hurricane, obviously, as this moves on in. Let me clear that out. And uh, again, we'll watch it make a landfall. Right now, looks like that landfall. Uh, this one's a little faster. This is actually going toward two o'clock now. So it's a little bit faster solution than what we were seeing yesterday. So uh, in the afternoon hours, two o'clock, making landfall, moving inland. You're looking at some very strong winds, hurricane gust winds getting over into New Orleans. And then, and then kind of moving inland like this. And then this will be spreading some, I mean, got some pretty good winds there blowing across portions of Alabama, Mississippi right through here. Uh, so you're looking at 50, 60 mile per hour winds. That'll knock some power outages out, uh, unfortunately for you folks in Alabama, Mississippi. So uh, watch out for that as that storm, as Francine makes this landfall and moves to north. I mean, even into uh, Thursday morning some significant winds on this model here showing up here across Alabama showing wind gusts uh, up to 55 miles per hour in a pretty good swath of territory there and of course with the heavy rains and that kind of thing now yeah, power outages definitely could be a problem for you folks there in Alabama as it's moving northward and uh, continuing there late in the day on Thursday with some very gusty winds there on your Thursday so this is Thursday afternoon let's go ahead and take a look at the other model here uh, this this one is a little bit different. This one's not quite as robust. It's also a little bit further to the west for this landfall here. This is the other hurricane model here. It does show it strengthened to know. As you can see here, by the time we head into your Wednesday morning, uh, you're looking at 104 mile per hour winds here. Uh, pretty strong winds here right here on, on the, obviously the, the right side of the storm is always the strongest there. So we're showing some pretty strong winds with that particular cell on the right side there. And let's go ahead and take this all the way out. And again, the, the landfall is a little bit further to the west than the other one. So it's a little bit further away from New Orleans, which is obviously important. And then it makes landfall moves on inland, but it's not as impressive with the wind field here as the other model was. Yeah, there's still some 50 mile per hour winds, but not as much orange on that map. Notice that as we go into Thursday morning there, not quite as robust with the winds uh, profile here uh, across Mississippi and Alabama as it was showing on the previous model. So uh, this one's a little bit different, just a little bit, as that storm that makes its landfall and starts to track inland. And, and again, it's just gonna kind of spin there a little bit and uh, kind of fall apart uh, over time as it's away from its fuel source being obviously those ocean uh, water temperatures at that time. So let's go ahead and take a look again at the, at the Atlantic big picture here where we're watching Francine make its landfall. Looks like the European, as far as landfall, is kind of the same, similar to those other two uh, models we just looked at. Uh, again, bringing in as a, the, although it's a little weaker, it looks like a cat one there on the European model. And then we'll watch this other one out here in the Atlantic this will be obviously Gordon here. This will be Gordon out here. Oops, let me get my little circle. So this will be Gordon right there. And then there's some other redevelopment off the coast here. Uh, it could be the remnants of, of, of it making its way off the eastern seaboard again of uh, Francine. We'll watch and see if that does a redevelopment there. I've seen that a few times. You never know. And 
it kind of curls up and then goes back into the Carolinas again. So that could be the leftovers of Francine working off the coast there. We'll see. And then redevelops and then kind of comes in. And then this hurricane out in the middle of the Gulf, it really bottoms out. I mean, really, it's a it's a major hurricane. Not 939 millivars. Yeah, that's a big hurricane, but it's out in the middle of the Atlantic and it should stay that way. I do not see this making any kind of uh, course correction that's going to take it to the East Coast at this time. I think it's going to probably likely stay out to sea. Uh, at this moment. So that's what we're expecting. Active tropics here for the next few days. And uh, so let's see what this, and th one thing about this big storm out in the Atlantic now, as it goes into the Northern Atlantic, it could also bring another pattern shift down the road later in the month in September and October. We'll see it, how that works out. But when these, when these big hurricanes get further north, they can cause the global westerlies to change a little bit with their weather pattern. So just keep that in mind once we watch Gordon. Now, why do we got to watch Gordon? Because it could impact the overall global weather pattern, which, of course, impacts us. A little, little weather knowledge there for you there. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the rainfall amounts here. We're going to look at, the again, the European model here. As we've watched uh, Francine make its landfall here across Louisiana, spreading the heavy rains there across the south central United States and in the southeast back over to the Florida Panhandle. Got another little disturbance here across areas, obviously, of, of, of toward Montana. That was that area bringing that marginal risk of severe weather going into your Thursday there with some thunderstorms there. And as we progress through time, you notice this, this, this precipitation of southeast not really going to go anywhere. It's just going to kind of wash itself out a little bit there across the southeast. So the uh, areas of Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia are going to stay under the gun with some rain there. And then we get, it, it looks like it, it looks like whatever energy is left to France, he tries to transfer off the eastern seaboard. And then we get another redevelopment there and comes in across the Carolinas. We'll see. Now, this is a little bit far out. We'll see with that. But it moves back on in with some heavier rains there across uh, North Carolina, Virginia, and getting up into Maryland and into the northeast. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'm not sold on that just yet. That's kind of a rarity to see something like that. But that kind of moves up there. And then we still got this big trough swinging out here toward the west, bringing us some precipitation across areas of California. Uh, going into your Wednesday, going into the 18th there uh, with some little bit of wet weather there out here uh, across the, the west there. As that pattern shift is going to be taking place, we'll get a big trough out in the west. Uh, that'll bring the change there and we'll see things begin to improve there. Uh, and, and big warm up there obviously expected there in the east with that system. So we'll take this out to the end of this forecast run here. As you can see that, uh, that uh, rain kind of lingering there across New England. Still a little bit wet, wet weather there across Georgia and South Carolina. And still a little bit, obviously, we got that little weak system out here in the west. So these are the zones we'll be watching here as we go to Thursday, heading toward the 19th of September. All right, let's go and talk about the rainfall. We're got we obviously expecting lots and lots of it. So let's take a look at this as we look at the latest here from the European model as this thing makes landfall and bring some rains out toward the, the northwest as well with that weak system out there and some heavier rains across portions of Montana. But we look at the 10 day outlook here, obviously, and uh, looking at pretty wet weather here across the east coast, especially if we get that redevelopment here. Obviously, this is the heaviest rain across the southeast with that system uh, known as Francine moving in. And then we got some uh, pretty decent rains here across Idaho and areas of Montana as well as we look toward the end of obviously going Thursday and then another system coming in toward next week. So we got a couple areas to watch there. Let's look at the Southeast radar totals, uh, rain totals here on the European. We're going a little bit closer here and we're looking at a little bit higher than what we were seeing yesterday. looks like anywhere from, I'm seeing six, here's a six, here's a seven, uh, here's a seven, here's a nine. There's a lot of fives in here. So I would say anywhere from five to nine inches of rain, just depending on where those bands set up That'll be bringing you your heavy precipitation there. And then we're getting some heavy rains here across uh, South Alabama and, sa and South Georgia. Needed areas, a little bit of a drought that's been going on there as well. Uh, but some very heavy rains there across the Florida Panhandle will need to be watched closely uh, too. All right, let's talk about the temperatures. We are gonna get a little bit of a temperature break coming our way. I wanna talk about this before we kind of uh, close things out here. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. And what we're, what we're looking at here is, again, the, the pattern shift that's taking place with the cooler temperatures that are expected. So again, the blue, that's where temperatures are running a, a below normal there at the 850 level, the red, that's your warmer weather there. So obviously we got the tropical system coming in, fairly seasonal across the Southeast. We get a nice little push of cool air out there toward the West heading in toward Thursday. So you notice a little blue there. So we're gonna be cooling it down out the West. 
Definitely warming up here on the high plains with above normal temperatures expected here as well. Uh, as that system, uh, as we watch the Gulf system, that's just gonna get stuck under the ridge of high pressure. We're gonna have a ridge there that's gonna kind of keep things um, stuck there for that system to not be able to move on out as we go uh, through the week. So it's just gonna kind of meander there, but most of the country is definitely seeing a warming trend there. And then we got another cool shot coming in out toward the west, toward the end of this model run, uh, going in toward the 17th and 18th. So uh, folks out on the west coast, you're gonna basically stay on the downside. So you can almost uh, split this country, uh, split it here, uh, to where you're basically here, you're, you're gonna see below normal temperatures here in the west, still loading, and then we're gonna look at the above normal here for a big part of the country, especially the middle portion of the country here, uh, as we go toward the end of next week, going from Thursday into Friday, into the 19th and into the 20th. So that's how it's looking currently with the long range models. Let's see if the Climate Prediction Center is backing that. We'll take a look at that real quick here as we're looking at, again, the West, as we were seeing there, we got that one initial shot. So we're talking about the 15th to the 19th, uh, the six to 10 day outlook below normal here, big warm up here across most of the country. Near normal, thanks to the rain and cloud cover here across the southeast from the 15th to the 19th. And that doesn't really change a whole lot. Still very warm for most of the country from the northeast back into the upper part of the United States, hitting down to the south central states and staying below normal out here in the west with that other shot that's coming in here as we head toward the 17th of the month. That's what the European was showing that as well. Precipitation wise, this has changed a little bit, obviously not nearly as dry, except for areas up there in New England and looking kind of wet here across the southeast, obviously because of the remnants of our system moving there. And it looks like this moves inland with a kind of an active weather pattern here across the uh, the northwest in the, the the high plains here. And obviously with that uh, lingering effects of whatever that is that uh, coming along the east coast here, uh, bringing the rains, this might need to get trimmed away a little bit, I think, looking at the long range. If that verifies that low heading up that way and kind of lingering, that could impact the, the long range forecast for this part of the country as we head toward the 17th. Obviously that's what the European model was showing on your forecast there. So boy, we got a busy, busy broadcast day, boy, a lot going on. I do plan on doing some live broadcasts here for you guys. So if you'd like to go ahead and uh, get in on the action there, uh, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you'll learn on future content. And I guess always leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if there's a product or something you'd like for me to highlight, uh, please include that in your comments. I do appreciate y'all supporting the channel. So I am gonna be doing live broadcasts on Wednesday. Uh, we'll see y'all the exact timing of landfall anywhere from 12 o'clock to five o'clock, somewhere in that window. I will start doing those live broadcasts. I've done a retooling of my graphics. I can do them from the desk. I can do them from the wall. I really like the real setup there. And hopefully I'll give you guys some great coverage here. And on, here on the YouTube universe. All right, that's your forecast updated for today. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.